Hello, welcome back to Meditating the Word. My name is Cherie. I'm your host and fellow traveler on this journey through the Bible in a year. Whether you've been reading the Bible for years or if this is your first time to read it from Genesis to Revelation, I'm glad to have you with us. We're in our seventh month, more than halfway through. I'm proud of you for hanging in there. Now, let's jump into today's passage. This is day 194. Today, we are reading 2 Chronicles 27 and Isaiah 9 through 12. I'm reading from the World English Bible. Let's get started. The Second Book of Chronicles, Chapter 27 Jotham was twenty-five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jerusha, the daughter of Zadok. He did that which was right in the Lord's eyes, according to all that his father Isaiah had done. However, he didn't enter into the Lord's temple. The people still acted corruptly. He built the upper gate of the Lord's house, and he built much on the wall of Ophel. Moreover, he built cities in the hill country of Judah, and in the forests he built fortresses and towers. He also fought the king of the children of Ammon and prevailed against them. The children of Ammon gave him the same year one hundred talents of silver, ten thousand cores of wheat, and ten thousand cores of barley. The children of Ammon also gave that much to him in the second year and in the third. So Jotham became mighty, because he ordered his ways before the Lord his God. Now the rest of the acts of Jotham, and all his wars and his ways, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. He was twenty-five years old when he began to reign. He reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. Jotham slept with his fathers, and they buried him in David's city, and Ahaz his son reigned in his place. The Book of Isaiah Chapters 9 through 12. But there shall be no more gloom for her who was in anguish. In the former time he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time he has made it glorious by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. The light has shined on those who lived in the land of the shadow of death. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased their joy. They rejoice before you, according to the joy in harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the plunder. For the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as in the day of Midian." For all the armor of the armed men in the noisy battle, and the garments rolled in blood, will be for burning, fuel for the fire. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, and the government will be on his shoulders. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, There shall be no end on David's throne and on his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from that time on, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of armies will perform this. The Lord sent a word into Jacob, and it falls on Israel. All the people will know, including Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria, who say in pride and in arrogance of heart, The bricks have fallen, but we will build with cut stone. The sycamore fig trees have been cut down, but we will put cedars in their place. Therefore, the Lord will set up on high against him the adversaries of Rezin, and will stir up his enemies, the Syrians in front, and the Philistines behind. They will devour Israel with open mouth. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. 
Yet the people have not turned to him who struck them, neither have they sought the Lord of armies. Therefore the Lord will cut off from Israel head and tail, palm branch and reed, in one day. The elder and the honorable man is the head, and the prophet who teaches lies is the tail. For those who lead this people lead them astray, and those who are led by them are destroyed. Therefore the Lord will not rejoice over their young men, neither will he have compassion on their fatherless and widows. For everyone is profane and an evildoer, and every mouth speaks folly. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. For wickedness burns like a fire, it devours the briars and thorns, yes, it kindles in the thickets of the forest, and they roll upward in a column of smoke. Through the Lord of armies' wrath the land is burned up, and the people are the fuel for the fire. No one spares his brother. One will devour on the right hand and be hungry, and he will eat on the left hand, and they will not be satisfied." Everyone will eat the flesh of his own arm. Manasseh eating Ephraim, and Ephraim eating Manasseh. And they together will be against Judah. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Woe to those who decree unrighteous decrees, and to the writers who write oppressive decrees to deprive the needy of justice, and to rob the poor among my people of their rights, that widows may be their plunder, and that they may make the fatherless their prey. What will you do in the day of visitation, and in the desolation which will come from afar? To whom will you flee for help? Where will you leave your wealth? They will only bow down under the prisoners and will fall under the slain. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Alas, Assyrian, the rod of my anger, the staff in whose hand is my indignation, I will send him against a profane nation and against the people who anger me. I will give him a command to take the plunder and to take the prey and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. However, he doesn't mean so, neither does his heart think so, for it is in his heart to destroy and to cut off not a few nations. For he says, aren't all of the princes kings? Isn't Kalno? like Karchemesh? Isn't Hamath like Arpad? Isn't Samaria like Damascus? As my hand has found the kingdoms of the idols, whose engraved images exceeded those of Jerusalem and of Samaria, shall I not, as I have done to Samaria and her idols, so do to Jerusalem and her idols? Therefore it will happen that when the Lord has performed his whole work on Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, I will punish the fruit of the willful proud heart of the king of Assyria and the insolence of his arrogant looks. For he is said, By the strength of my hand I have done it, and by my wisdom, for I have understanding." I have removed the boundaries of the peoples and have robbed their treasures. Like a valiant man, I have brought down their rulers. My hand has found the riches of the peoples like a nest, and like one gathers eggs that are abandoned. I have gathered all the earth. There was no one who moved their wing or that opened their mouth or chirped. Should an axe brag against him who chops with it? Should a saw exalt itself above him who saws with it, as if a rod should lift those who lift it up, or as if a staff should lift up someone who is not wood? Therefore the Lord, the Lord of armies, will send among his fat ones leanness, and under his glory a burning will be kindled like the burning of fire. The light of Israel will be for a fire, and his holy one for a flame." and it will burn and devour his thorns and his briars in one day. He will consume the glory of his forest and of his fruitful field, both soul and body. It will be as when a standard-bearer faints. The remnant of the trees of his forest shall be few, 
so that a child could write their number. It will come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and those who have escaped from the house of Jacob will no more again lean on him who struck them, but shall lean on the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. A remnant will return, even the remnant of Jacob, to the mighty God. For though your people, Israel, are like the sand of the sea, only a remnant of them will return. A destruction is determined, overflowing with righteousness, for the Lord, the Lord of armies, will make a full end, and that determined throughout all the earth. Therefore the Lord, the Lord of armies, says, My people who dwell in Zion, don't be afraid of the Assyrian, though he strike you with the rod and lift up his staff against you as Egypt did. For yet a very little while, and the indignation against you will be accomplished, and my anger will be directed to his destruction. The Lord of armies will stir up a scourge against him, as in the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Oreb. His rod will be over the sea, and he will lift it up like he did against Egypt. It will happen in that day that his burden will depart from off your shoulder, and his yoke from off your neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing oil. He is come to Iath, he has passed through Migron, at Michmash he stores his baggage. They have gone over the pass, they have taken up their lodging at Geba. Ramah trembles, Gibeah of Saul has fled. Cry aloud with your voice, daughter of Galim, listen, Laisha. You poor Anathoth, Madmenah is a fugitive. The inhabitants of Gebim flee for safety. This very day he will halt at Nob. He shakes his hand at the mountain of the daughter of Zion, the hill of Jerusalem. Behold, the Lord, the Lord of armies, will lop the boughs with terror. The tall will be cut down and the lofty will be brought low. He will cut down the thickets of the forest with iron, and Lebanon will fall by the mighty one. A shoot will come out of the stalk of Jesse, and a branch out of his roots will bear fruit. The Lord's Spirit will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight will be in the fear of the Lord, He will not judge by the sight of his eyes, neither decide by the hearing of his ears, but he will judge the poor with righteousness and decide with equity for the humble of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he will kill the wicked. Righteousness will be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb, and the leopard will lie down with the young goat, the calf, the young lion, and the fattened calf together, and a little child will lead them. The cow and the bear will graze, their young ones will lie down together. The lion will eat straw like an ox, the nursing child will play near a cobra's hole, and the weaned child will put his hand on the viper's den. They will not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. It will happen in that day that the nations will seek the root of Jesse, who stands as a banner of the peoples, and his resting place will be glorious. It will happen in that day that the Lord will set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant that is left of his people from Assyria, from Egypt, from Pathros, from Cush, from Elam, from Shinar, from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. He will set up a banner for the nations and will assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. The envy also of Ephraim will depart and those who persecute Judah will be cut off. Ephraim won't envy Judah and Judah won't persecute Ephraim.
They will fly down on the shoulders of the Philistines on the west. Together they will plunder the children of the east. They will extend their power over Edom and Moab, and the children of Ammon will obey them. The Lord will utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea, and with his scorching wind he will wave his hand over the river, and will split it into seven streams, and cause men to march over in sandals. There will be a highway for the remnant that is left of his people from Assyria, like there was for Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. In that day you will say, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, for though you were angry with me, your anger has turned away, and you comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy, you will draw water out of the wells of salvation. In that day, you will say, Give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Declare his doings among the peoples. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done excellent things. Let this be known in all the earth. Cry aloud and shout, you inhabitant of Zion, for the Holy One of Israel is great among you. Father God, thank you that though we walked in darkness, we now walk in your marvelous light. You gave your Son, and as Isaiah prophesied, he is our wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and our Prince of Peace. Through the line of David, just as you promised, and his kingdom and his righteousness is established now and forevermore. We give thanks to you, Father. You are our salvation. We will trust in you and not be afraid. You are our strength and our song. Amen. Well, there we have it, another chapter in our journey through the Bible. It's not always easy to understand, but remember, it's not a race, and each word we read is a seed planted in our hearts. Thank you for being part of this journey. Join us tomorrow and every day as we continue our journey through the pages of the Bible. This is Cherie signing off for the day. Remember, you are in my prayers. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Until next time, be blessed and be a blessing.